Using Timeline in Unity, you will be able to make your games more cinematic, realistic and make the player be more immersed in the gameplay. You can make some nice cinematics or some custom events so that for example in some horror game, when the player walks into the house, some scary things might start to happen. In my example scene we can see some cars and when I click the erase button, you can see the camera starts moving and it will also switch between the cars and start playing some sounds and also yellow cow will appear and move in front of the other cars. So this is a perfect use for timeline. And all of this was really easy to set up. When I take a look at the timeline itself, which I will later show you how to set up, we can see some animations with which I'm able to easily move them across the timeline. We also have some activation tracks, which allow us to activate different cameras. We are playing some sound and activating the yellow car. And because timeline is already built in Unity, the only thing that we need to do is create some object on which we will have the timeline. Then we will need to go to window, sequencing and open the timeline window. I will drag it somewhere here. Now we want to select the object on which you want to create the timeline. So I will select the timeline object and we can hit create. This will just create us the dot playable asset and also it added the playable director component onto our timeline object. This is just controlling the time of the current cutscene. From start, the play on awake is ticked, so it will automatically start the cutscene when we start playing the game. In the timeline window itself, we can hit this plus icon and add all kinds of tracks. The most common one is the animation track, which will obviously let us to create some animation. So first, if you have already created some animator, you can just drag it in, but because I haven't, I will start with the main camera. So just drag the object to the animator and it will ask you to create the animator on the object. So I will click that. Then I can just hit the record button and start recording the animation that I want. When you first open the timeline, it might be in frames. So we want to go to the settings and set it to seconds. Because I created the animator on the main camera, I will begin animating the main camera. So I can just select it and go to the scene and select the beginning second. So I want it to start at the zero second. And to make sure that the first keyframe is correctly written in the animation, I will just move it slightly and rotate it slightly so that you can see the keyframe here. And then I will go to about three seconds and start moving the camera as I want. Once I'm done with the animation, I can click the record button again. And when I go to the game window, and play the animation, you can see that we have created a pretty nice movement of the camera. If you would want to edit the animation now, you can just right click it and hit edit in animation window, which will open the normal animation window. Another useful thing is to right click and convert it to clip track, so that now you can actually move with the animation across the timeline and easily move it anywhere you want. With the clip track selected, we can also set its name, the start and duration and all of these useful properties. If the animation is too fast or too slow, you can adjust the speed multiplier and so on. Next thing you might want to do is to switch the cameras. So for this, we can add activation track. We will just need to input the object that we want to set to active and it will be set to active only for the time that we set here in the timeline. So first I want to play the main camera movement and then I want to activate some of the other cameras. So just drag the object in. When I hit play, the main camera is moving and then it will switch. Then we could also add animation track for the other camera and so on, do it with as many other objects as we want. Now, if you have about 20 tracks in here, it might be getting a bit disorganized. So I would suggest you to create track group which just allows you to group the tracks. So I called it cameras and now I can take all of these other tracks and drag it under the track group. If you want to play some sound, it is pretty simple. Just click plus and add audio track, drag the timeline somewhere else and add the audio that you want. But you also need to add the audio source from which you want to play it. So I will just create new object to it. I will add component audio source 
go back to the timeline, select the timeline object and just drag the audio source in here. So we have the camera movement, now the audio should start playing and we have also switched the animation. But you can see that after we play the activation track, the object gets back to inactive, which when I want to set the yellow card to active is not what I want because the activation track allows us to set it to active only for a certain amount of time. So how would we do that? We can use signals which allow us to do more fancy stuff with the timeline. So I will add signal track and here when you right click, it allows you to add signal emitter which will just send a signal somewhere and some objects can receive it and do some other actions. It can also trigger scripts, turn off some objects, turn on some light and do pretty much anything you would want. It is showing us small exclamation mark because we haven't created a signal yet. This is just the signal emitter. So when we select the signal in the inspector, we can see the signal that it is going to emit. When I click it, we can create a new signal. This is just going to store the signal as an asset. I will put it to some folder and give it some name. So select the signal that you want and put it anywhere on the track when you want to emit it. On the signal track, you can see that we also need to specify the signal receiver. So for me, because I want to turn on the yellow car, I will go to the yellow car and onto it, I will add component signal receiver. So now in the timeline, we can specify the signal receiver. So just drag in the car. And now the signal track is going to emit a signal and the yellow car is going to receive it. Then what do we want to do with it next? depends on us. So I will just set it to active. So I will select the yellow car and here in the signal receiver, we can add a reaction to which signal it should respond. It will be the yellow car activate, which I have just created. And we can add a reaction to it. We can have multiple reactions, which is quite nice. And here you might be thinking that we can just turn on the whole yellow car object but because the signal receiver is on it, when I would turn off this whole object, the signal receiver would not work. So the way that I have set it up is that I have all of the parts of the car under this parent object. So I will just need to turn on the body, spoiler and wheels. Under the signal receiver component with the correct signal selected, we can add some functions. So first, on which object do we want to trigger it? It will be the body because I want to set it to active. So select the function and here we could also trigger some stuff in code. You can see that we are able to access the transform, mesh filter, mesh render, but we need the game object, set active and I will set it to true and do that for all of the other body parts. So now all of these parts of the car should get activated when we emit the signal. So let's see if it works. So we are moving the camera, then we should play the sound and change the camera. And as soon as it reaches the signal emitter, you can see that the car has appeared in the background, which is the correct position where the car should be. And now with this knowledge, just using the activation track, animation track, audio track and the signal track, you will be able to create pretty much any cutscene you want. Now, one thing that you might be wondering how I did is that when I press the button, it starts playing the cutscene. So I will select the timeline, you just want to tick off the play on awake so that it doesn't start automatically. Then you want to add some button and on the button or pretty much anywhere else, you can add a script and in the script we will need to create a variable for the playable component which we have on the timeline object. So for this you need to add using unityengine.playables, then we can make a variable of type playable director and we can make a public void which will just play the director. In the script you just need to specify the director which is on the timeline object and on the button you can just add the onClick function, drag the script on which you want to trigger the function and then just select the function which I called start trace timeline. So now you have all of the knowledge that you need to create your own cutscenes and custom events for your games. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye. Thanks for watching this video till the end. 
If you are looking for a Unity, C-Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.